So we'll do our warm ups first and just be gentle today since it's the holidays and everybody's busy doing too many other things. So feet hip width apart, get those toes straight ahead. So if you bend your knees, you wanna be able to see your big toes slightly. So your knees are bending towards your second toe. That means your hips are aligned. Ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, everything stacked up, get supported by your bones. And sitting bones toward the floor so those hips stay open, shoulders back and down. And just let your arms relax. Crown reaching to the ceiling, get your core activated. So pull your bottom ribs toward your spine and up. Feel that lengthening through your spine and that firming in your midsection. And then focus inward as you move into your yoga perspective, noticing what's going on internally for you. Breathing, let your belly move as you breathe, inhaling and expanding your lungs, exhaling and letting the tension go. And then on an inhalation, arms coming up to shoulder to level and stretch your fingertips out up through the crown as well. Exhale, hands to your heart, elbows a little back so your chest stays open. Inhale out to the front, keeping your shoulders down. And then bring your hands behind, just clasp the fingertips and press them toward the floor as you lift your heart. Stretch your head back just slightly, shoulders down. And then exhale, pivoting at your hips. Come on into that forward position. Hands coming up and head down as far as you'd like. So lift your sitting bones, get a good stretch on the back of your legs if you like that. Hands toward your head for your shoulders to work a little bit. And then knees bent, chin in, and just slowly wind your way back all the way up. Lift your heart and another upper body back bend here, looking toward the ceiling. Shoulders again down toward your waist always. And then inhale, coming upright. Exhale, releasing your arms and back into mountain pose. And just take a moment, feel your spine getting a little bit warmer. And again, inhaling, reach out at shoulder level. Hands to your heart, stretch to the front, shoulders still down. And then clasp your hands the opposite way behind you, so the other finger outside. Lift your heart again, stretch into the back bend, pivot and exhale into the forward position. And relax. Tuck in your chin, maybe pull your head towards your legs a little bit more. Hands towards your head a little bit further. And don't forget to lift your sitting bones. And then knees bent, chin in, and slowly wind from the bottom of the spine back all the way into the back bend. Lift your heart, stretch your spine. Don't forget to keep breathing. And inhale upright, release your arms. And again, just notice how that circulation increases. And we'll do our side stretches. So arms out, palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders. Go ahead and clasp them and bring your arms next to your ears. Stretch up through the fingertips and head. Lean no twist over to the side. So just feel those ribs stretch apart. Push the foot you're leaning away from down a little bit more for even more stretch. And don't forget to breathe. And then inhale back up. Keep your shoulders down as you switch the other hand to the front. And again, lengthen your whole spine and lean to the opposite side. Remember, no tipping forward with that top shoulder. Just sink into the foot you're leaning away from for that stretch to maximize. And then again, inhale upright and release. As you get back in the mountain pose, just take a moment feeling all that circulation and that stretch through the ribs. And we'll do our twists. So remember, we're stretching apart through the whole spine, base of the skull, base of the spine, stretch apart. Arms at shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling, Hands above your shoulders and clasp your elbows. Pull your arms next to your ears and your shoulders down, sitting bones toward the floor. Stretch that spine apart and exhale for a twist. Another breath in. As you exhale, pivot on over. 
So just take a few moments there breathing. Just relax, tension out. Keep your arms near your ears and stay in your twist as you inhale your way back to the top. Lift your heart and look toward the ceiling. Pull those elbows back, the shoulders down. And upper body back bend, not working that lower back too much. And then inhale, upright. Exhale around to the center and switch your arms around. And again, lengthen through the whole spine and twist to the opposite side. And another breath in. And as you exhale, come on over. And again, just take a few moments there, breathing and relaxing. Tension out. And staying in your twist, come on back up. And again, a nice upper body back bend so that you're not overworking the twisted lower back. And on an inhalation, come upright. Exhale away to the center. Extend your arms into extended mountain with those shoulders still down. Everything stacked for support. Just feel everything. Just allowing your whole muscle system to relax. And then let's swan dive forward. So bring your arms to shoulder level and pivot chest forward. Stretch everything straight and then just drop into ragdoll and hang. So let your body go as deep into that as you want. If you like the um, pull in, you can pull your hands behind your legs and just give yourself an extra stretch through the back of your body. And then again, arms to the front, chin in, knees slightly bent, and once more from the bottom of the spine all the way up, just aligned all the way to the top, and this time into mountain pose. So take a moment, just feeling all that circulation through your spine after we've worked in all its directions. And then let's step a little wider, as wide as you feel like, toes to the front. We're going to pivot from the hips, so thumbs to that hip crease, and just sitting bones a little bit behind you. Chest and chin lead, and then tuck the chin back toward your chest. Get your back as flat as you can, parallel to the floor. You can have your hands on your shins if that's a good place for you, or you can keep them there at the hips just to make sure you're pivoting there, not rounding at your waist. And then stretch your spine. And then you can keep your hands on your shins or you can drop your hands to the floor under your shoulders and we'll do another twist. So again, sitting bones and spine stretch apart and keep your right hand on your leg or the floor and bring your left arm up to the side looking at it. And then keep looking at it, turning your whole body, hips, ribs, and shoulder coming into the twist, not just turning your neck. So the hand comes as much right above you as possible. And the sitting bones and crown are reaching away, getting that good twist stretch through the spine, opening those bones so that they can move. And then as you exhale, follow that hand back down, either to your leg or the floor, and stretch apart, getting ready for the opposite side. So left hand on your leg or the floor, right arm out to the side, looking at it. And again, keep turning your whole body into the twist as you look up. So your chest is sort of facing a little bit toward the side as you get into your twist. So deepen as much or as little as your body wants. Remember, head and sitting bones stretch apart. Take a breath. And as you exhale, follow your hand back down and to the floor or your leg. And again, stretch that spine, hands to your legs if they aren't already, and pivot back up. And again, into mountain pose. So take a moment there as you get back into the mountain pose, just feeling your body as it's a little bit more stimulated. And then hands behind you on your, uh, on your back so that you're supporting your spine with your hands. Feel of the palm in at your shoulder blades, fingertips down toward your hips. And then pull those elbows toward each other and feel that heart open a little bit more across that chest area. Again, lift your heart, 
and look up toward the ceiling. Press those hands into your back for nice support so you're not overdoing that lower back. One, three. Two, three. Lengthen through the whole spine, just deepen as far into the back bend as your body wants today. And then chin towards your chest as you inhale, come back upright and again into mountain pose. Hands to your heart and looking at your fingers, inhale to bring them toward the ceiling. Keep looking at your thumbs, bring them back and a little back bend as much or as little as you want. And then again, Follow your thumbs first to your heart and then pivot in your hips. Exhale, drop your hands all the way down toward the floor. Back down for a moment. Slide your hands up on your shins under your knees and knees, elbows, and back straight. Stretch it out. And then exhale, hands back down into your And one more winding up. And slowly back to the top, bring your shoulders up, back, and down, and again into that pose. So once more, hands to your heart. Let's inhale, follow them up. Swan dive this time, arms out, chest to the shin, lead, pivot forward, exhale, jump in the right down. Another slide up on your shins with those hands, and again, stretch and straighten everything. And then bending your knees, we're going to come transitioning to the floor. So into our child's pose, hips on your heels, hands, palms up, forehead down, and relax. So remember, knees together and get a good back stretch, or apart for it easier later. And then inhaling, come on back into a seated position and step pose. Feet hip width apart, straight out in front. If you get those sitting bones a little bit behind you, you can have your hands at your side or in your lap. And let's see, we'll just work our feet. So cross your foot up onto your ankle and we're going to massage the toes and the base of the toes because we never use our, we never work our feet very much. So we're going to just move the toes around. You can put your fingers between the toes and give them a good little spread apart. You can massage the arch and the heel and just everything right around the ankle. And then circle the foot a few times, both ways. Flex the point a few times. And then release that foot. Same bones again, adjusting if you need to. And we're going to, of course, favor that other foot. So again, a nice little massage to the toes, to the base of the toes. Work those toes, just spread them apart with your fingers if that's working for your foot today. And work your arch, massage the heel, the ankle, and then some circles. So again, circles, you can keep the foot on the leg or you can lift it up a little bit if that is easier for you. And flex and point a few times with the ankle really working well. And release. And then we're going to come up into a kneeling position. So we work those ankles a little bit. So come on all the way onto your knees. And then sit back with the flat feet, the tops of your feet flat on the floor. And just take a moment to adjust those sitting bones right above your heels. And then we're going to lift up and tuck your toes under. Yeah. So some people don't like this. Mm, yeah, most people don't like that. So if it gets too much on your toes, you can release your feet back onto the tops of your feet with the toes flat. This is a good exercise for your toes. One of my Former students used to do this when she was brushing her teeth every morning so that she'd really work her toes. And we're going to work our arms so that we forget about those toes. So bring one arm out, spread your fingers, and then pull the hand down with the other hand so you get a good stretch across the wrist. And then pull the fingers back and push the heel of your palm out. 
Again, working that wrist just gently so that we're not overdoing anything. And then bring the hand flat, parallel to the floor and just push each finger. So we're getting a good stretch across the back of the hand. And then pull each finger back. No knuckle popping, just a little stretch across the palm. And then when you get it all the way done, spread those fingers really, really wide. And then pull your thumb inside the palm and wrap your fingers around it. And then tighten like a bud because we're gonna do that National Geographic flower opening, just slowly motioning. So get your bud really tight to start with and then just begin unfurling your petals. So fingers just gently unwinding, just allowing those fingers to stretch gently. And as they get all the way out, really spread them apart and then pull your hand back and let that palm face the sun and the sky and then shake that whole arm out. And yeah, we've tortured those toes for a while. So go ahead and pick them up and give those feet a little bit of crunch with the toes together and apart and circle your ankles a little bit and sit back with the feet flat. Take a moment and notice this side of your body is a little bit more stimulated. So yeah, we got to balance it and do the other side. So now that we've rested those poor little toes, yeah, we're gonna do it again, unless of course you already had enough. So go ahead and come up onto your hands and tuck those toes back under. And again, settle the sitting bones right over those heels. Get everything nice and aligned in your torso and bring your other arm out. And we're gonna pull that one down. Again, get a stretch across the wrist as much as feels right for you today. And then pull the hand back and push the heel of the palm out. And then spread those fingers and work them each. Just gently getting a stretch and coming back the opposite way. And again, whenever that's done, spread the fingers out, get a really good stretch, and then thumb inside and wrap the fingers around into your bud. And really tighten your bud, tighten, tighten, tighten that fist. And unfurl you know, that National Geographic Nature Special, getting those flower petals just slowly opening and stretching out through your whole hand. And when it's all stretched out and those fingers are spread, reach the palm forward and up and shake it out. And again, let's come up off of those poor little pinkies and toes and scrunch them together and spread them apart and twist around your ankles a few times behind you. And again, sit back on your heels, feet flat. Take a moment noticing your ankles as well as both sides of your arms and whole body. And then again, shift off and bring the legs out in front. So sitting bones a little behind you, feet hip width apart. And let's work our core a little bit today. So bring those feet in till the feet are flat with the knees straight up. So remember a little roll in at the top of the thighs to make sure you're not spreading the knees apart. And the feet flat and hip width apart. So activate the core. So again, the ribs toward your spine and up. Hands, palms up just to keep your shoulders relaxed and then lean back just slightly till you feel those abs muscles work a little bit more. So our starting position, and then we're gonna work one leg at a time. So lift your leg just a little, or you can bring the foot out so that your shin is parallel to the floor, or you can straighten the whole leg so that your knee is straight, the kneecap kind of pulling up towards your thigh and the toes spreading out through the base of the toes out in front of you. Shoulders stay down, core stays supporting you. If this hip flexor at the front of your thigh is working really hard, you can lower the leg if you've got it straight, or you can keep it bent, or you can keep the foot near the floor. 
With personal practice, remember, do what's right for your body. So stretch out if you got those thighs parallel to each other with the legs stretched out, that's fine. Or, you know, some other version. Either way, it's good. Stay on your sitting bones. Don't roll back on your sit bone. And that, oh yeah, exhale that foot back down. And sit up and take a break if you want to, or you can stay back with the core supporting you. <clears throat> so balancing the body, you know what we're going to do. We're going to do the other leg, right? So core activated, ribs towards your spine and up, shoulders down, hands, palms up. Come back a little bit till that works, and then lift your leg. So a little bit with the foot, just parallel or all the way straight, your choice. Stay on your sitting bones, don't roll back too far. And let that whole midsection of your body work, supporting your leg a little bit. Lower it if you need to, bend it if you need to, do what's right for your body, because that's what we do in yoga, personal practices. Shoulders down, head reaching away, and sinking into the sitting bones. And yeah, if it starts vibrating, you can put your foot down anytime. Or go ahead and do it anyway, down with the foot. Take a break, sit up, or just stay there because we're gonna do one more thing, yeah, both feet together. It's going to be more challenging. So remember, do what's right for your body. You do not have to go to an extreme. Core activated, shoulders relaxing, hands, palms up to do that shoulder reminder and reach out through your head, lean back just slightly. And again, stay on your sitting bones as you lift your feet. A little or more or straight or hold your toes. That takes it out of those hip flexors a little bit more. And shoulder blades down, extend out through the bottoms of your feet. So do what's right, stay on your sitting bones. If you go too far onto your sacrum, you'll roll backwards and lose your balance. So don't go too far. Take a moment and breathe. Work it with your legs apart or lower or just above the floor, any way you like. And if you love it and you wanna do a little bit more, you can separate your legs and do what we used to call the egg for some reason when we were in elementary school gym. And then bending your knees and bringing your feet back down, slide your legs out, sit back up, and just relax that midsection. Take a breath. Exhale any tension. And then shoulders up, back, and down, and back into staff position. And let's bring the bottoms of the feet together in butterfly. So you can hold your hands under the feet and pull the heels back toward your body, knees out toward the side. We didn't really warm up those hip rotators today, so it may be a little bit higher with your knees, that's okay. And then we're gonna slide the knees or the feet just a little bit forward. Bring your hands under your legs and the top palms on the tops of your feet. And then bring your chest and chin down toward your toes a little bit more. If you're really flexible, you may get there. That's okay. But you don't have to. Push those sitting bones a little further behind you if you'd like. And just go as deep into that pivot as you'd like, right there at those hip joints. And then releasing your hands, pull them back through and sit back up. And maybe a little bit more release through that inner thigh. And then bring your hands behind you, right under your shoulders, fingertips or palms down, whatever works for you. And then lift your heart a little bit more and pull, pull the shoulders, shoulder blades down towards your waist. And just ease into that opening through the hips a little bit further. And then exhaling, hands back to the center. We're going to lift the knees and pull those legs back out to the front again. So once more, let's toes out to the front and then pull the toes back. And just notice what parts of your ankles and legs are working as you do that. And then back toes up into staff position. 
Take a moment there, just reach the crown toward the ceiling, heel the core, bring your arms out to the sides, shoulders down, turn the palms up, and then bring the thumbs into your palms and your fingers wrapped around. And then turn one fist toward the floor and leave the other one up. And then we're gonna alternate. So turning, one up and one down. And just move those fists, just gently. Keep the shoulder blades, shoulders toward your waist, crown toward the ceiling as you keep rotating those fists, reaching out through the fists. Make sure that your arms stay about shoulder level. And then start moving more of your arm along with the fist. So all the way up to the elbow, maybe. Getting that whole lower arm working. Oh, let's go all the way to the shoulders now. And then we're gonna really involve the shoulders in it. So emphasize the shoulder forward as you turn the fist down and then release it as you turn it back up. And then get it all the way toward the spine as you get that whole body moving. Just keep pushing out through the fists, working the shoulders and arms, and then more gently, releasing the shoulders and the upper arms and the lower arms, and then just the fists again. And then releasing those fists, just shake out your arms and hands and give yourself a good release. Back into staff position. And then core activated, feet at the end of the mat. We're gonna roll all the way onto our backs for our twist today. So go ahead and actively release your body into that surface beneath you. Bring your arms out to T position, straight out from your shoulders. Shoulder blades still toward your waist and shoulders down toward the mat. Hands, palms up. Sitting bones toward your heels. You're gonna press the low back down and bring the right leg up. So it goes straight up toward the ceiling. Flex the foot and press it out. We're gonna roll all the way over to the left side. So bring the foot down to the floor and your hands together on the floor in front of you. Keep your head on the floor. If that doesn't work for you, put a pad or a pillow under your head. And then all the way on your left hip, and we're gonna take the left hand and hold the leg or the foot and push the foot away from you. Get a good stretch going through that lower back. And then bring your right hand up toward the ceiling. Palm open toward the ceiling and arm right at shoulder level, lowering it behind you toward the floor. It may not make it to the floor, that's okay. That's your middle back twist as your arm goes toward the floor and your shoulder comes down. And your head turns to look toward that arm behind you so that your neck is in the twist. So remember, personal practice, be gentle if you need to. You can be holding your thigh or your calf rather than your foot. If you need a little bit of release in that lower back twist, the more your hand comes toward the floor, gravity will bring it when it's ready. Don't force it. Little back twist and your head turning neck twist. So just be gentle where you need to be. Take a couple breaths. Just relax. And releasing your leg or foot roll all the way onto your back, bringing that foot back up to the ceiling. Get everything nice and stretched and straightened on the floor. Get that core nice and activated. And then leave with your heel and slowly bring that leg all the way down to the mat. And as it gets down, just notice all the circulation going through your spine, maybe activating up into your head for our meditative relaxation in a moment. But right now, of course, we're going to do the other leg. So sitting bones toward your heel and bring that left leg up. So again, flex it up, get that whole leg activated. Keep your head down as you roll over to the right side. So you're coming all the way onto your hip, foot to the floor, hands together in front of you so that everything is ready to be positioned. 
And then bring your foot up into your hand if that works for your body, or just hold on whatever on that leg. And we'll rotate your head to look up toward your left hand, palm open toward the ceiling as you lower it behind you. And again, go as far into that as your body wants, and then just keep relaxing and breathing. The more you relax with the exhalation, the more those <clears throat> ligaments release and the arm drops further toward the floor. Just do what's right for your body. Keep your head turned for that neck twist if you love it. And just breathe. Let your body maximize or minimize whatever is right for your twist on this side. And again, just keep breathing, keep relaxing, and letting the twist happen, not forcing it. And again, when you're ready to release, you're going to let go of that foot or leg, roll all the way onto your back, get everything ready, pressing down through the lower back as you activate the core and lead with the heel, lowering the leg all the way down. And again, when it gets there, just bring your hands, palms up near your sides, shoulders down, <clears throat> and get ready for our relaxation. So a few deep breaths, just exhaling and releasing any tension. So we did some core work there. We also did some arms and legs and hands and feet. Just you know, move those around getting everything just released and relaxed, ready for our final relaxation. And as you breathe more deeply, just let your body sink further into that surface beneath you. Deep breaths, just letting everything go. Belly moving as you breathe, shoulders sinking into the surface beneath you. And just let the earth support you. As you relax into that deep connection with the earth, allow awareness of your body to release from your thoughts. As you do, other thoughts will come to your mind. But remember, it's the job of your mind to keep producing thoughts, but it's your choice whether you pay attention. At this moment, there's no need to remember the past, no need to anticipate the future. Just let all those thoughts disappear without awareness, floating away as easily as your breath. As your body relaxes deep into the earth embrace, and your mind floats freely as the breeze, just allow your awareness to release both your body and your mind, and turn your attention inward. Find the peace deep within. Fill your body with the peace and your mind with the peace. And just take a few moments being peace. And if you have time today to keep relaxing, feel free to stay released for as long as you'd like. It's time to reactivate for the rest of your day. Just begin to run energy and awareness with the breath back to the moment, to the room, to your body. And just begin breathing more deeply and stretching your body gently, however feels good for you right now. And when you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, Sitting bones toward your heels, back pressing down. <clears throat> Draw the heels in toward your hips, and then your knees.
gaze up toward your heart. Wrap your arms around however feels good for that appreciative yoga hug. Let your body know you appreciate its yoga work and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're ready to release, head and feet to the floor, rolling over to the side and sitting back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining me.